put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Spider-Man 2 movie review. Peter Parker continues to be Spider-Man, but it is causing him some trouble to be running around all of New York cleaning up after criminals, and he has trouble maintaining a job and thus earning enough money to get by, and sadly he's also missing out on social activities, greatly disappointing Mary Jane. And so he decides that he is Spider-Man no more, even reenacting that cover. However, at the same time, Dr. Otto Octavius is engaging in science, movie science, which you know, as you know, there's there's like a 33% chance that it'll go, you know, completely horribly wrong and something will, you know, and it does. And he ends up with these four, you know, basically he found one of those Sentinels from the Matrix trilogy, you know, ripped off four of the arms from there and, you know, had them grafted onto his back. And he, you know, once this happens, he goes insane and starts conversing with them. It's about as silly as it was in the first one. And he is obviously a great threat. This is one of those really great sequels that takes everything the first one built and just improves on it. You know, it just goes further. Every element that worked in the first is here, and it's improved upon, you know. Where the action before was pretty good, here, it's great. Everybody knows of the train scene, even people who haven't watched the movie. And anyone who's seen it hasn't forgotten it. It's, you know, the, the way, the, the build-up to Octavius, Dr. Octopus, is really effective. A bunch of the times where you see him, he's introduced in with with this really ominous, you know, basically it's it's like in Jurassic Park. I think it's the the T Rex that makes the you know you you have the the water ripple thing and you hear the ground you, you sense the ground shake and that kind of thing. They do that in this movie, and it just works really really well. You you really feel like he is a force to be reckoned with, you know, only Spider-Man can stop him. The action, the choreography of the action is phenomenal, and this has all the elements to the action that a Spider-Man movie should. You know, the, the first one came close, but this one, I mean, you've got mid-air fighting, you've got debris flying all over the place, you've got, you know, innocent bystanders needing to be saved. You know, some of these elements were there in the first one, but again, they're here again, and it's better, you know, and Superman's, Spider-Man's heroics in this movie really have you, you know, cheering him on. The sort of melodrama of Peter Parker's life works better this time around. I'd say some of the, you know, relationships work better. You know, Peter Parker and Mary Jane in this movie, I personally feel has a lot more grav no, gravitas, I don't know, impact. It, it feels a lot more credible, it works a lot better. Because, you know, Peter is not sure that he can manage both lives. So, 
you know, for for a while at least, he feels like he has to give up his regular life as Peter Parker in order to be Spider-Man, in order to be there for the world, he has to give up himself, and that includes Mary Jane. And at the same time, he is, you know, conflicted about that, and, you know, wanting to be with her. And she does sense that he wants to be with her, and, she, you know, she's having doubts as well, because she has had a bunch of experiences where he wasn't there when she expected him to be, when she needed him to be. The, the Osborne curse is followed up on very nicely in this with Harry wanting revenge for his father's death in the first one. And it's, it's one of those really great movies where it's, it, it furthers things and by the end of it nothing is quite the way it started out but there's still room for it to be followed up on in the next one. You know, it just, it's, it's a very grand story, and, and the whole Osborne thing is not something you can deal with in just, you know. The, the Osborne curse, especially with Harry's part in it, is not something you can deal with in just a single movie, or kind of two, but. The visuals are really, really nice. Again, the visual aesthetic is pretty much spot on. The effects have greatly improved. Spider-Man's swinging through the city feels more epic and you, you know, and it looks a bit more real as well. I'd say this one has a lot more sort of Yeah, I already mentioned that. The comedy, unfortunately, remains this mix of just the weird and awkward, that's one element, and physical pain, because Sam Raimi is a big fan of the Three Stooges. Yeah, so, you know, people getting hurt, yeah, he loves that. The acting is quite good. J.K. Simmons is J. Jonah Jameson. I said it in the video for the first, but it bears repeating, and he's much funnier in this one. Actually, this might be some of the, this might be the best moments with him as J. Jonah Jameson. Just the you know he gets all the best lines really in this one. The villain is more interesting. Where the first one actually, where the first one sort of tried for a tragic villain, this one actually succeeds in it. You really do feel for, you know, Doctor Octopus, D D Otto. It part of it stems from the fact that we really do understand his, you know. Gobby's motivations got muddled about halfway through the film. This one, you are never unclear on what it is Otto wants or why it is he wants it. And it just really, you know, and I, I don't really want to give away what it is, but it is compelling and yeah, Molina acts the part beautifully. Again, brilliant casting. It really is. He he looks the part extremely well, and he really does add that, you know, that extra quality to the extra layer, I suppose, to the character. It is, you know, much more interesting to have a complex villain than just someone who's evil for the sake of evil. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.